Uh, hey, hi. Uh, today we are going to see how uh, using a proxy server, we are going to manipulate uh, content that is being passed around uh, on a HTTPS channel, right? Essentially, um, this is more of uh, an ethical hacking use case where we want to manipulate content that is being passed over HTTPS so that um, we could better test our application or uh, debug its behavior uh, when the input changes, right? Um, so to start with, uh, I've chosen Charles as our uh, proxy server. Um, unfortunately, Charles uh, is something that is used by a lot of uh, pen testers and hackers to uh, explore uh, SSL and HTTPS traffic. Um, in this case, we are going to use it uh, for our debugging purpose. So I, I wouldn't, uh, given that Charles is, is used by uh, a lot of people to um, look at secure content, um, I wouldn't recommend installing Charles. Uh, but this is just to kind of be a proof of concept so, so that we could maybe identify a better um, a proxy server um, to get this done if, if we are going to uh, uh, use it as part of our uh, development tool set, uh, right? So to start with, install the Charles app for Mac. Uh, and once you are done, um, I, I pretty much didn't let Charles manipulate any of my settings. And I said I would kind of change, change them manually or have more granular control over uh, the things that Charles uh, changes, right? Um, so I have Charles installed now, um, and uh, why don't I bring the bring it up? So we are using uh, the free version of uh, Charles for a thirty day evaluation period, right? Um, the license cost is only about uh, fifty dollars, so. Um, it, it's definitely worth spending for the features that it comes up with. Okay. Once we bring up Charles, uh, we would go and enable the proxy server. So the proxy setting tells us the port in which the proxy server is going to be running, um, which is going to be uh, 8888 for us. Okay, so note down this port number and uh, uh, so tell Charles that I'm not going to let you manipulate my network and I will kind of do that on my own, right? Uh, the other thing is also to make sure that uh, we have enabled uh, SSL uh, proxying. So uh, if this option says start SSL proxying, then you should have to click on it so that you enable SSL proxies, right? Once these two settings are done, let's go and uh, enable the proxy settings. So we go to, um, if you're on Mac, you can go to Chrome and under the Chrome settings, if you type in proxy, it will kind of take you directly to manipulate the proxy server settings. So in this case, we're going to say, okay, enable HTTPS proxy server and my proxy server is running on my local machine on port 8888, right? And we say, okay, and apply those changes. Once we apply the changes, uh, if we go for, um, let's just open a new tab and go for Amazon Singapore, right? So it's going to say that uh, the certificate is invalid because uh, we have Charles in the middle um, looking at all the traffic that is going between my browser and uh, the Amazon server, right? Um, at this point, um, Charles is not able to manipulate any traffic or even look at some of the traffic. Uh, so we're going to enable Charles to actually do that. 
um, in order to do that uh, you would go to Charles and say go to help go to SSL proxying and say install Charles root certificate essentially what this does is it installs the root certificate provided by Charles into our keychain so that any certificate issued by Charles would be trusted by our browser right um, so this enables this is a key step that enables Charles to be able to uh, intercept content uh, to other HTTP sites and still make the browser believe that it's coming from an authentic source right so let's do that uh, this would launch the keychain app So if we go to keychain access, you will now see that there is this new certificate that would show up in your list. And by default, the certificate is not trusted. So you would go and enable it to be trusted, right? So you could go to trust and say, I trust, always trust the certificate. Close this and it's going to ask us to authenticate okay and then you would see this going from red to saying that this uh, certificate is trusted right um, i think the key thing is to make sure that once you're done experimenting is to come back and delete the certificate Once you've done that, let's launch Amazon again, right? So this time, um, in this case, Charles has been able to successfully intercept and still kind of tell the browser that uh, we are indeed accessing Amazon and there is nobody in the middle. Uh, but in reality, we can see that Charles actually has been intercepting those requests now you can see compared to the previous request Charles is actually able to give more details of the pages that we have browsed and the traffic that is going through it you can also see um, so this is just an ad that is showing up Charles pushing us to buy the license version so uh, you could actually see the raw content um, of the requests and response that are happening uh, you would ideally not be able to see any interaction that has been happening uh, between the servers so um, in this case we are actually able to see the content that is passing through HTTPS like for example say for example if I go to bestsellers and we come back to Charles you would see that there is a new request for bestsellers and you can also see the HTML content that is being passed from Amazon to us. So our objective in this case is to be able to figure out how can we manipulate this content, right? Um, say for example, uh, in one of the test cases, we want to manipulate content coming from Amazon and we see this menu item coming on the left, uh, we would want to put this on the right side, right? Um, to demonstrate that we are able to act actively and visibly change content in a website. In order to do that, uh, you can see that the URL is bestsellers, okay? So we go to Charles, Um, obviously there are like multiple query strings that are coming so uh, the first thing to do is we want to manipulate uh, the content that's coming right so why don't we save that content first uh, you could go and say save response so I'm going to save this response 
into my mission as bestsellers.html right let me save it so the content is saved uh, and we're going to now go and manipulate that content and come back and tell charles to use the new content that we have manipulated and saved in our local machine uh, right so in order to do that uh, let's first open the saved content okay so i have saved this in my downloads file we can open it and see that this is essentially the content that um, is helping to render that file right so usually a lot of script is present in the end of the site so we go back go to the bottom of the site um, you can see there is a lot of javascript um, and, and i believe uh, amazon needs to be really efficient in a way how it uh, downloads javascript and injects them you can see that it's really not um, linking to external javascript files but has found a nice way to embed javascript into the content so here we are going to place our small little hack. Um, essentially what the script does is once the page is loaded, um, it is going to find this element called um, SG left call to. Uh, so we found out by inspecting the Amazon bestseller page that this is the style uh, that is controlling the uh, menu to appear on the left. Now we're going to change the style for it to appear on the right side, right? So we go here, add it to the bottom of the script. Okay, we have added this. Now we save this file and go back to Charles. Now we're going to tell Charles that, hey, the next time you're going to serve this file, map it to a file on my local machine instead of going to Amazon and fetching it. So we're going to say that, okay, if the URL is slash GP slash bestsellers, no matter what query string is provided, take the file from my local machine and serve that. So we're going to say, okay. And now um, if you see the map local would be checked now, previously it wasn't checked. So let's go and try Amazon now. So I'll go back to the home page. Everything works fine. Now I go to bestsellers. Yeah, our script has got executed and you can see the menu item coming on the right side. Um, it's kind of still a functioning menu item. So I'm able to click on beauty products, look at beauty products. And if I go back to bestsellers, you can see that the menu item is still on the right side, right? So um, I think as, as next steps, uh, it's really to figure out how can I inject this kind of JavaScript without having to override individual URLs, uh, right? Ideally, if it's a site other than Amazon, they would have included some Google Analytics or some analytics script uh, which I can completely override and say serve the script that I have written um, which would make it very easy to inject JavaScript given that Amazon has used a lot of in inline scripting uh, it has just made it a little bit difficult to inject uh, JavaScript into it. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, thank you.